All right, please be joined this time by a state champ, Coach Houston, the state champ, Benedictine defense coordinator. Coach, man, I'm, I'm not going to harp on this because I want to talk about linebacker play. But what okay, a, all right, four all plays right. from the four plays from the one yard line, man. Four plays. Yeah, from the man. Line. Yeah, man, it was it was crazy. Um, uh, it's just a really a credit to our kids. Um, we had to deal with a lot of adversity all year, and they were just resilient, man, persevered, and just kind of really got back to our fundamentals and things that we know we needed to do to make stops. We really wanted to force them outside and kind of stuff the inside, but they also had a 260, 65 yeah, the guy was a pound full back that he was awesome. that had just ran the ball down to yeah. the one. And, yeah. al and almost scored from about eight yards out. So, you know. But you know what the um, lesson is for every person, not just at Benedictine, yes. for everybody. The game the game is never over. The, the, until they score, they didn't score. And I know that Correct. In, the, in the stands, when a team gets to the one, everybody kind of, oh, uh, you know. The reality is until they score, they didn't score. And, and I thought it said a lot about you guys, your character, everybody in coaching staff, the players, whatever. That they just got yeah. one stop, just played the next play, and that's all you can do, you know. And a lot of times teams do that's score it. down there. Let's be honest; a lot of times they do. But oh they yeah, don't, oh it's yeah, not automatic. And, yeah, um, I've had friends tell me like, "Man, you just don't see that in in any level of football." Yeah, you, anyway. you know, it's hard to to stop four downs from that distance. You know, it could be a penalty, or it could be something that may happen, and a team may get pushback or things like that, but four straight times from that distance. Yeah. Is, We're playing is a great to opponent. Be proud of. I mean, both I guess teams a great were, opponent. Both teams were so physical and so good up front. Yeah. It was just, it was probably one of the best games in 4A up front that I've ever watched. I was there watching in person and just the level of play. And that's why I was excited to hear from you. So let, let's move on because yeah. I know we, we want some, you know, everybody don't want to hear me get excited about the goal line staying forever. So, um, gotcha, let's talk gotcha. about some linebackers, Coach. I'm really excited. To have right. you. Let's get going. Yes, sir. I'm excited as well. Let's get to it. Um, start. It's just my contact information. Galen Housen, defensive coordinator, Benedict Military School. Um, my phone number, Twitter, email. Um, gonna get into it here. Skipping ahead. All right. First, we're gonna talk about just our defensive philosophy at BC. And um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see this hashtag Savage Mentality. It's kind of just our style of play. We want to be attacking aggressive defense, and uh, we want to dictate to the offense um, what you're going to do. Uh, we want to be physical, disruptive, um, violent with our hands, violent and vicious with hits. And we just want to make sure we're not just a defense that you just play. We're a defense that you feel and you know that you played us. Um, going into linebackers. This is kind of our mission here as a linebacker at Benedictine. Um, we will play with high intensity and great enthusiasm. We will deliver violent hits and make secure tackles. Um, we will attack offenses by being more physical at the line of scrimmage and hustle with a relentless percent to the football. Uh, we will be sound decision makers and play with intelligence. We will be disciplined in our approach to the game and respect our opponents. And we call ourselves the goon squad. Um, I took the physical intelligence and discipline, something that Coach Britt established when he first established the program and when he was a uh, defensive coordinator. And so just incorporated those three things. When we first played in the state championship, a lot of people talk about the physical intelligence and discipline that used to be on our jerseys until they changed that rule and we couldn't put it on there. So we kind of kept those things. Um, I believe that all linebackers have to have these certain in intangibles. Okay. And so, um, believe that each and every one of these are, are important. Every guy is not going to have all of these intangibles, but I believe that they're great intangibles and things that you want your linebackers to have. I don't care what your system is. It could be a three, four, four, three, whatever your scheme is. I believe that if you want to have great linebacker play, these intangibles are important. Um, character, I believe is important on any team. You know, if you want to be a true champion, you 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 want your kids to have character, and and that's what's gonna last, not just through the football season, but what's gonna carry them for life. Um, linebacker one, another important one is intensity, man. You need to be a hard worker, practice hard, because 
a lot of times these are the guys that are calling your defense. These are the leaders of the defense. These are everybody who the defensive guys are looking to. When those big guys up front get tired and get fatigued, which they will, regardless of whether they're rotating because they're right there in the heart of the action, you're right there with them at the second level. You got to get those guys lined up. You got to lead them. They got to look to you, look in your eyes and know that they can trust you and count on you to make the plays and, and will them to wins. And so um, intensity is none. Be a difference maker. You you, you know, um, that's very important. Um, you would love for those guys to have instincts. Instincts, sometimes instincts are natural, but they're also read recognition keys and things that you can do as a coach to improve instincts. Make sure your kids understand how to watch film, how to diagnose plays, and reading and re recognition is very important um, for linebackers. And if they don't have it, you got to make sure you drill them and there are things you can do as a coach to help uh, increase instincts. Some guys just naturally see ball, get ball. And you love that when you have those linebackers that can do that. And um, But you still have to – everybody has to be coached, even guys in the NFL. And so another one that's that's a unique one on here that I want to touch on before we go is challenge readiness, right? Studies and committed to learning, perfecting his craft. I try to tell each and every one of our guys, perfect your craft. There's always something you can be working on, whether it's um, whether it's block destruction, whether it's reader recognition, whether it's um, pass rush skills, whether it's getting stronger in the weight room, whether it's agility whether it's just being more of a student of the game and better in the classroom or just being a better person in general. We want guys that are hungry for challenges and don't cower away, cower away from responsibility or expectations. Next slide here, we're going to go to these fundamentals of linebacker play. With all our linebackers, when we grade all of our kids on defense, we start with stance, assignment, excuse me, stance, alignment, assignment, technique, Okay. So every time we grade each one of our one of our players on defense, we're grading on those four things. All right. When we talk about our linebacker stance, and this is mainly an inside linebacker stance, but I'll touch on our outside linebackers as well. Um, we normally give these guys, we talk about head up, chin up, black back straight. We want your feet shoulder width apart. Guys that have longer torsos, taller players, they're gonna be able to get a little bit wider in their stance just so they could be a little bit more comfortable. But understand that the stance. It's not designed to be comfortable, all right? So a lot of times when we get these guys, we're working on stances at the very beginning, in spring, and then we start over in the summer. We want to have them sit in their stance to be uncomfortable, build their legs up, build that hip flexion and things up. And so we want your knees bent, hide your belly button, slight air under your heels, because we want all of our movement to be forward, toes pointed straight downfield, heels slightly out, Want those elbows hugging those rib cages and the thumbs to the sky. All right. And a lot of times when we're doing our stances, I'll just give them simple commands. Okay. I'll say feet. They'll look down at their feet, spread them wide apart, make sure their toes are in, heels are out. Okay. I'll say chest. Make sure they got a wide chest. Kind of squeeze that orange in the back, bow their necks, keep that chest big, wide, wide up front. And then we just say sit. When we sit, we want that butt down. We want to hide that belly button. And that should be a perfect stance for our guys. With the outside linebacker stance, it's more of a stagger stance. We want that outside foot back, kind of more so of a heel, a toe to inseam type of alignment. Still want to be shoulder width apart. And so it's just more of a stagger stance than our inside linebacker stance. But we still want those guys with flat backs, good hip flexion. Okay, butt down, toes forward, elbows hugging those rib cages, ready, ready to use those hands to, to disrupt blockers. Next, know the defense. Know the defense. If you're going to be a linebacker, you got to call the plays, you got to know the signals, you got to know the defense inside and out. You're an immediate football player, you're on the second level, you got to know run versus pass, you got to know the alignment. Um, in the assignment of your D-line, and you also got to know the coverage and passes, okay? You got to know where you fit within all of these things. I'll say, okay, so knowing the defense and being the quarterback of the defense is very important for us defensively, especially as linebackers. Our linebackers make all the huddle calls, and then they relay that to the rest of the defense. So it's important for our, our linebackers to know the defense, know the defense inside and out. You got to know the front. You got to know the fits. 
you got to know the coverage. And so it's responsible that our guys at linebacker are the quarterbacks of the field, okay? Number three, we want to attack the line of scrimmage, okay? Tackle for losses change the football game, okay? So we want to be aggressive at the line of scrimmage. We want to attack, make sure we have great eye discipline and trust our instincts. All right, next, playing square. This is very important for young players. When they're moving and though we're moving um, 45 degrees downhill, when we're scraping and everything, we want to make sure that our shoulders are square to the line of scrimmage. One of the worst positions you want to be on the football field is when your head and shoulders are turned to the sideline. Okay. So to deflect that and to, to defeat that, we want to make sure to you keep your shoulders over your toes when you run. All right. You want to make sure you play with square shoulders and you want to be able to be able to change direction at all times. All right. So we want to make sure our guys stay in a great athletic position. What we mean is a great base. We want our feet shoulder width apart and we'll talk um, coming here forward on things that we do on our everyday drills to help with that great power base and staying in the athletic base. As we talk about playing square, we always want to make sure we leverage the football. Know your leverage on the defense, whether you're an inside out player or an outside out or an inside out player, excuse me, or an outside in player, and you want to attack and own that leverage. Okay. With our inside linebackers, pretty much the majority of the time, they're going to be inside out players. Trust your teammates that are outside in, whether it's the cornerbacks or maybe it's that outside linebackers that's building that fence, setting that wall and turning things inside. Trust that they're going to turn the ball back to you and you be an inside out player. The worst place to be on the field on defense football is when you're past the football. OK, we want to make sure we own our leverage, attack that leverage, attack that near hip, near shoulder, close to the football and wreak havoc when we get there. Effort and attitude is one of the heart of our philosophies on our defense. All right. Relentless pursuit to the football, bad intentions when we get there. Six, anticipate and destruct the blocker. When you're playing linebacker, the offense is designed to block you in some type of way. Understand who the person is that's trying to block you. And once we recognize who that guy is or who that who that offensive or opponent is, okay, we want to make sure we destruct that blocker. Okay, refuse to get blocked. Be the, be the hammer and never the nail. All right, what we do as far as block destruction, whether it's hit and shed, flipper technique, okay, whether we're boxing or spilling, we want to make sure that we give our defenders and our athletes multiple tools in the toolbox to be able to anticipate and destruct, destruct the blocker, okay? When they get out there on the football field, they're going to see different blocks from different angles, from different leverages and different players on the field. So we want to be able to give these guys multiple tools so they, they're able to destruct the blocker depending on what they may encounter on the field. So we just don't have just a one way of doing things. We give them a bunch of tools so that they're able to use it on the football field as needed or when those situations arise. And number seven, be a great physical tackler. All right? Destructing the blocker has to be before being a tackler because if we can't get our blocks, we're not going to be able to make tackles. OK, so we got to defeat and destruct blocks and then we got to be able to be great physical tacklers, whether that's. Whether that's inline tacklers and close to the line of scrimmage or we got to be able to be great tacklers in space. All right. We got to be aggressive. We got to be attacking. OK, track the hip on your leverage, close to the football, strike and drive for five once you get there. OK, in our system, the way we play defense, we must have we must be relentless to the football no excuse okay we we do gator drills we do multiple pursuit drills and different things to make sure our players understand the emphasis and importance to get into the football and they must be fundamentally sound tacklers at the linebacker position all right we're going to go into a little bit of our everyday drill work just want to show some uh drills and things that we do um uh, these are kind of like the core things of being a linebacker, whether it's agilities, bag drills, tackling, block destruction, and coverage drills. I'm not going to really go into block destruction and coverage drills tonight, but we're going to talk about agility, some bag drills, and we're going to go through these different tackling and some drills 
and some film on some of the things we do and how the drills and things that we do every day at practice, how they actually are reinforced, okay, and how they actually happen on the football field and how our guys put what we do in practice and put it into action in their performance on the field. All right? So during pre-practice, pretty much every day, if we if we don't get to it during pre-practice, we will get to it in Indy. Our linebackers are under the shoot, okay? Whether it's right here, under the shoot, working on hip flexion, okay? Hands above their heads, all right? Duck walks, all right? Then we do always a step replace, working on that good power base. And all these things and these drills that we do under this shoot are just to help develop and improve their flexibility, their footwork, and their change of direction skills. All right, we work on lateral mo mobility, work on forward mobility. Right there is just a straight, just push off. We're just slide stepping, kind of like a defensive stance in, in basketball, just our shuffle technique. Shuffle, 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 back and forth. Every time they go under the shoot, their first step should always be with that lead foot. We go from a shuffle all the way under the shoot to a shuffle and run technique. And these guys go through this every single day. All right. And all it does is develop and improve their reaction skills. One of my favorite right here, they're going to go under the shoot. All right. And all it is is a quick change of direction drill. We just call this a, a reaction drill. Okay. Redirect drill. We're going to step, redirect, and go back where we came from. They walk over. All right. And they do the same thing from the other side of the shoot. All right. Another important drill with linebackers and working on agility, change of direction, are bag drills. Okay. One one important thing when we go over these bags, we want to make sure our guys always have their chin and eyes up. The same thing we want them to do when they're tackling. Okay. The ground is going to be there. So we don't need to look at it. We need to pick our knees up, pick our feet up, have great movement, footwork, and change of direction skills. All right. And we need to have our eyes up. So we're always in a position to where we can see and make plays and redirect as needed. Similar to things we do in the shoot, it's just to develop and improve speed and agility. All right, work on our footwork and coordination, um, improve change of direction. And also people don't realize this, but improves their strength and power, muscle memory. Okay, building those legs up, building those fast twitch muscles up, the things that we're gonna need as linebackers to change direction and be able to make the plays and perform like we need to. And also, as you go over the course of time, especially when you start early doing these things in the spring and in the summertime, it's great conditioning and endurance for your linebackers, okay? There's one important thing that our linebackers have to do in our system and just playing defense in our system in general is you have to are you in, okay? Run, all right? We're looking for guys that are going to run, they're going to relentlessly pursue the football at all times, okay? That's a non-negotiable. You have to run and get to the football, and these drills, bag drills, and um, and these things are just, um, just everyday drills that we use to help improve our change of direction skills and coordination for our linebackers, okay? Make sure they have good work, footwork there. See some guys are slipping and touching the ground, all right? Some of those younger guys coming at the end, all right? We want to make sure that after we finish, all right, we want to burst off of the bags. Some of these older guys that are more used to doing these drills, you'll see that their bursts are a little bit better than the younger guys, but we want to make sure we go through these things every day, all right? So as it gets later and later, the fact that we're playing so many games in the course of the season, our younger guys are getting a lot of practices in. So the way they look when they first enter the program as freshmen compared to how they look towards the end of the year is vastly different as they become used to the drills and are able to build that strength and coordination skills. All right, we're going to get into tackling. All right, and we believe in the kind of Seahawks rugby style tackling. We're a shoulder leverage tackling team. We want to make sure we track. Near foot, near shoulder, cut the distance, maintain our leverage, all right? And once again, we talk about being tools in the toolbox. We're going to show you these different tackling drills as they perform on the field. 
not only do we teach near hip, near shoulder, but we also teach getting our head across and getting our head across the bow. One, because I talk about that tools in the toolbox situation. So we want to make sure we equip our kids with all the tools they need to be successful football players on the field and depending on the situation. All right. So there are different situations that occur on the field. And so we want to make sure we give our guys those different tools so that they're able to react and play with better instincts on the field. Here we go. Number 27 here. It's going to track the near hip of the of the quarterback once he scrambles. And as you can see, he cuts down the grass there, closes and finishes. This one's going to be our inside linebacker right here, number 34. Right here, we got a sweep. You can see he continues to track. Guy fumbles the ball, but he's in a good position inside out on the hip, the near hip of the ball carrier. Here's Dowell in the goal line situation. Here we're going down here. We're going to send a little bit of pressure. Our safety's going to kind of lose contain here. But 27, our linebacker here is going to make sure that he tracks the inside hip of the quarterback all the way to the sideline. And we're able to get a turnover here in a crucial situation in the game. All these are just different. All those are just different videos of just tracking that near hip, near shoulder, closer to the football. Cadet tackling here. A lot of our drills we're going to do from a fit position, sometimes two-point, six-point position. Then we're going to get to bags, okay? And there's always a progression. And then we'll go from the bags, and we'll go up to our stances and get movement skills. Cadet tackling for us is eyes through thighs. Wrap and squeeze, drive for five when necessary. All right, we want to make sure our guys have their eyes up, chin up, track the inside near hip of the running back. We will make sure we club up with our arms and drive for five with our feet. We want to make sure they are lifting up that pad and they're driving it backwards. We don't want to just hit the pad and fall, okay? We want to make sure we lift that pad up, the, up off the ground and drive it backwards for five. Right here is a great situation of a cadet tackle by number 27, outside linebacker here. He shuffled techniques based upon the little shift or motion of the offense, and you can see the close right there by our linebacker. Here's another one that's unique in an empty situation, scramble drill. Right here we attack inside of number three, and we're able to close there. on the quarterback. Next is gonna be cadet roll tackle. Once again, you can see everything is from a fit. What we're gonna do is right now they're inside leverage. So we're gonna attack with that right shoulder and we're gonna roll to leverage. All right, eyes through thighs, wrap and squeeze and roll. So if you're an inside out player, you're gonna attack near, near foot, near shoulder and then you're going to roll back into your leverage, okay? Roll back into your leverage. When these guys roll over with the pads, you want to make sure they have both arms wrapped around the pads, all right? You want to get to a position where you can see and make sure these guys are not just rolling. They make sure they have both arms wrapped around the ball carrier, wrapped around the pad, wrapped around the ring as they roll. Very important that they're just not rolling without the wrap. The wrap is first. Okay, wrap us first, and then we want to make sure we roll the leverage. All right, we just don't let our linebackers get in on the action. Right here will be a great example by our defensive lineman with the wrap and roll technique. All right, I'm sorry, here it goes. It's the outside linebacker here coming off the edge. All right. And we got the scoop and score. Well, scoop by our defensive lineman. He didn't quite score right there. He gets tackled. Um, another situation here, linebacker in space with the cadet roll tackle. And it's just unique that on both of these attempts, they end up causing turnovers here that our linemen are able to pick up and they get some glory here scooping and running down the sideline. A point of emphasis, um, we have a major point of emphasis in ball skills 
and working on creating takeaways. And when we get the ball, we're trying to score. Our last technique is going to be profile tackle. We're going to attack the near pack of the opposing ball carrier, rapid squeeze, drive for five. As you can see, we're starting from a stance position. We want to make sure we're clubbing up. All right, we're accelerating our feet through contact, and we're driving for five, okay? Look at these guys' shoulders. We want to make sure we're downhill. We want to get our head and shoulders turned too far to the sideline, okay? We actually got them striking here. That was a good contact right there. Striking through the pad and through the man, okay? And then driving our feet back. We want to be downhill. We want to attack in front of that cone there. We don't want the offensive ball carrier to get momentum. In profile tackling, you see it's a club up. It's high. We're lifting that pad off the ground, both hands wrapped around the pad, and we're accelerating our feet through contact. It's a great example by our middle linebacker here. With a profile tackle there inside. Getting downhill, attacking the line of scrimmage, getting a tackle for loss with an effective tackle. Another example right here, Jalen Duncan right there inside, middle linebacker there, stuffing the back in the hole. All right, another tackle at the line of scrimmage or a tackle for loss with a profile tackle. Here's another one, a little spread formation. Inside backer right here. Watch how he closes with a nice profile tackle inside on the quarterback. Driving for five, driving the guy backwards. We talked about it earlier, all right? In order to be a great linebacker, you got to be a great tackler, all right? We teach different tackling techniques. We work from a fit position. We work with pads, work with rings, okay? Work on tackling each other, all right? Giving guys different drills and different things that they can do, okay? to be successful linebackers. And we always want to start from a fit position and kind of build on everything that we do. And you can see how it creates great results and great performances on the field. Coach, that was awesome, man. Oh, I'm yeah. ready to and go. It, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't I don't think you want me out there, but I have the right attitude. I just don't have the ability anymore. Coach Houston, man, that was awesome. I, it, check out his contacts. Anybody listening that wants a little more, Reach out to you, Coach. Um, I'm very impressed. There's no, that's why you guys made that goal line stand, among many reasons, and played for the state championship so many times. The discipline, the attention to detail, and the passion you guys have is awesome, man. I I really do. I'm a fan. Well, thank you, Chris. I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success, man. We work very hard at it, put a yeah. lot of time in it. You, you know, not just me. I appreciate the opportunity that you've given me as I represent the school and the staff. But, uh, you know, just a shout out to Coach Britt and everybody on our staff and everybody at our school and our kids, man. Um, it's it's an awesome opportunity, and I'm excited for having me. And uh, whenever you want to do this again, man, I'll be more than welcome yeah. to do it. I'm going to take you up some on some other it, guys man. on staff too, man. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to take you let's up get on it. it. Hey, um, really, if I can ever help you, let me know. I get down to Savannah, I'm going to come see you sometime. Please, please. Uh, you, you got my information, man. Just yeah. hit me up, and I'm hit you uh, up. and uh, it'd be great to sit down and talk ball, man, and just talk in general. Let's do it. Take care, Coach. I appreciate you, man. Again, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Chris. Take care.